This is a story about finding home. They say a soul wanders while you dream, and that a body rests in place. I have seen a future where we belong, where human beings belong to the world. Just another little animal trying to live. I've seen the future where we know that we are those little animals, and yet we've found our place. Yet we've found our place among the living. Not in the world of dreams. Not attempting to escape. Not trying to carry our souls as far away as they will. Not trying to conquer space. Not trying to conquer time. What is this future that I see? What is this ocean beyond the sea? I sit and I ponder in my dream, my dream of the future. And in my dream, I'm wearing headphones. I'm slumped over in a hot tub. I've drunk too much wine. And all I can do is sit and nod in time with the music and stare out at the forest. I'm at the top of a staircase leading down into thick green grass. There are other trees around me, some of them homes like mine. The windows are all leaves, clear but blue, tinted by the algae that live within them, grafted right in place, right into the walls of the tree, sustained by its energy. Have you ever seen the moon? No, you've never seen the moon. You've seen the light reflecting off the moon. And just the same, I see a little tower shrine with a light inside, a little lantern glowing in the night just above my head. They say when a body goes to rest, the soul wanders. A body at rest does not move unless impelled by an external force. It was a force like this that woke me from my couch, that took me from my rest. I got up, bleary-eyed, just a few hours after the sun had risen, there I was, a new day given. But I was not grateful, for I was still as my dreamer was, restless, a wanderer, not at home. I flicked on the kettle, I boiled tea. A little piece of comfort in the place that I called my home. I look out the window, in whose reflection I find me. I see the future. I see my home. My real home, where the kettle is graceful, fashioned like a pitcher plant, with walls painted pink and green, with a lid and a handle and everything you need to make a cup of morning tea. And in my home, which is not my home, I feel myself as though I were at home, my soul in another place, not with my body. For when I wake, my soul does not stop wandering, because to be in this body would be for my soul not to be at rest, and an object at rest will not move unless impelled by an outside force. My soul is at rest in my true home. 
Where the wind through the leaves always blows. Where my home in its time always grows. Shaped and sculpted by generations before me. Those who saw the folly, those who saw the pain, those who saw destruction of everything that came before. What a waste it was for the old race of human beings to see life and all its beauty and just find something to carve apart with machines. What a waste it was. For life, it said, I am open. And what a wonderful thing it is that in my world, in my home, the home I've seen, the future home, what a joy it is that in our future, at some point we learned that life is more than just something to burn and something to eat. That everything we need can be grown. We learned that the sun could provide everything we needed. Just as it provided the plants their bodies, it could provide us with everything we needed. With our tools, with our toys, with our grids. To live off the grid. What a silly idea. There is no point off of the grid. For one thing, a grid is a mathematical construction which extends across all of space and time in order that a coordinate system can be applied. Given three distinct parameters, any location in that grid can be defined. And there's no escaping that kind of grid. But the grids of power lines and fiber optic cables and mesh nets, those grids dissolve. They were never as connected as the grids in the soil, the grid of mycelium. What kind of world we could have, and what kind of world we did have, which uses that kind of connection? In my world, the one where your world is the past, the fiber optics are the mycelia. They connect us sea to sea. A sphere of light speed connectivity. Human beings never lost their need for connection in this world. I don't think it's possible to lose one's need for connection. For connection is what it means to be alive. To be on the grid. If you're not connected, you don't exist. And in this moment, in my drunken bliss, rocking back and forth to the sound of my headphones, I feel like I just might be alone, like I might just not exist. But I know, deep down, that there is a body waiting for me, a thousand years ago, looking out the window and drinking a warm cup of tea, there is a body waiting for me a thousand years ago, looking out the window, sitting down on the couch, lying down on the couch, closing her eyes, sobbing quietly, feeling nothing maybe, hoping, dreaming, waiting for me. Many things have changed in a thousand years, but looking back I see this is the only way it could have gone, and the only way to live a thousand years is to make peace with the world as it is, to learn to communicate, to learn to integrate. It's not so much that humanity returned to nature 
but that humanity found its own nature, its empathy, its communication, its communion. We formed a relationship, and in that relationship, we found our bliss. We found home. We found home on the grid. And now we're all connected. And we all feel like we might just be the only one who feels alone. But I think if you look a little closer and you look a little deeper, you might just find something you've never seen before. You might just find someone else alone. We're all connected. We're all connected by the grid of space and time. We're all connected by these fiber optic lines. But if we still feel alone, then in that case, whether far or near, our only hope is to guide each other home. So I sit, dead drunk in my little hot tub with my little headphones, five-pointed white flowers like stars, and I dream, and my soul wanders, but I've found my place among the living. I have found my home.